connected to the 2013 edition of Dr. Felix Duke's Ukwele Memorial Lecture, I'm almost, I'm most grateful for the special honor accorded me to chair this edition of the flagship lecture of the Nigerian Institute of Advanced Legal Studies. As a foremost institution established to provide a resource base and advanced legal education to cope with the challenges of the democratic process, I believe that this annual lecture is quite in tandem with both the core mandate and the traditions of the Institute to organize high-profile researches seminars and workshops. Let me also commend your insightfulness in delving into presence of international law and in coming up with the team actualizing contemporary international law as universal law of all nations, an African perspective. I'd like to congratulate you for bringing our brother and friend, His Lordship Honorable Justice Abdul Koroma of the International Court of Justice all the way from the head to do justice to this year's team. Just call my most welcome, sir. I'm further encouraged by the presence of high caliber intellectuals, academics, and resource persons that have been assembled to listen to this lecture. Therefore, I have no doubt whatsoever that we are going to have a rich harvest of ideas and views on the subject of this lecture that will strengthen the content and practice of international law while also sustaining the ideas of this institute. Your Excellencies, between ladies and gentlemen, international law has always been a subject of debate. This is especially in view of the occasion of flagrant disregard for rules of international law by the big and the powerful, while themselves forced to send down the truth of lesser powers. This, in addition to the frequent resort to individual sanctions by states, have led to some doubts and sometimes outright deniers of the relevance of international law. The absence of coercive enforceability of international law across the board makes, it, makes its actualization difficult and sometimes even impossible. As such, some jurists such as Hans Kessel have echoed the widely held view that international law is nothing more than positive international morality. Its weakness, notwithstanding, the first event that international law has become even more relevant in our ever globalizing world, not only has it served as a veritable instrument of peace through the ages, it has continued to be helpful in the regulation of international trade, maritime activities, travel, economic assistance, diplomacy, international communication, and other important activities of the contemporary international system. And by invoking certain principles of international law to justify their claims, states seek to actualize international law as law of universal jurisdiction. And that's why, even when the big powers commit to just acts of irregularity, like an invasion of weaker states, they often try to justify the intervention on legal terms. No one wants to be seen as violating the rules of international law and falling short of international moral benchmarks. It is imperative, therefore, to state that international law needs to respond quickly and pragmatically to evolutions in the international sphere. This is particularly necessary if we are to successfully confront contemporary challenges to global peace such as armed conflicts, terrorism, insurgents, and extremism. Much of what obtains today as international law in the area of war and armed conflicts was geared towards managing interstate conflicts and wars. However, it is to be observed that the nature and character of international armed conflicts have changed from wars between or among sovereign states to intrastate conflicts with international dimensions. We have individual states serving as state of proxy wars of other nations and international interests. This has been the case like in Somalia, in Syria, in Kenya, and of course in Nigeria as well. This scenario was never fully envisaged by extant international law, but today this change in the character of international conflict calls for a paradigm shift in the trust of international law if we must face the realities on grounds to enhance greater global peace. For Africa in particular, the burden of terrorism Militancy, violent crimes, and resurgence are direct consequences of indiscriminate and illegal inflow of small arms and dangerous weapons into Africa in the circuit of international law, treaties, and conventions guiding the rule of arms. Recently, insurgents and jihadists threatened the, ter the territorial integrity and, by extension, the sovereignty of the Republic of Mali, but for the intervention of the international community. 
the favored convention, such as the International Convention for the Suppression of the Financing of Terrorism, are the most domesticated observed. It states that four such conventions by organizing, instigating, abetting, or partaking in terrorist acts, money laundering, and illicit traffic in drugs and human beings are sanctioned without recourse to selfish narrow interests of individual states of the global community. The chances are that Africa and indeed the world will be a better place to live in. Therefore, this ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude by saying that um, from recent developments, the future and efficacy of international law lies with the strengthening of regional and continental communities and organizations. Besides the success story that the European Union represents, Africa has witnessed the emergence of regional and sub-regional communities and organizations, such as the African Union, East African Community, and the Economic Community of West African States. These have in turn given rise to treaties, conventions, and protocols that have helped to protect and promote peace, security, democratic governance, stability, regional integration, trade and development. The African Charter on Democracy, Election and Governance is now a highly dreaded international tool by good blockers. The enforcement of ECOWAS supplementary protocol on democracy and good governance, among many such very clever international legal instruments, have greatly helped the top regions to fight against unconstitutional takeover of government, CITA syndrome, fragrant abuse of power, money laundering, terrorism, human trafficking, illicit drugs, insurgency, and other threats to peace, democracy, and development. We should therefore take every necessary step to encourage the growth of regional and sub regional cooperation as a means of achieving or could not achieve at global stage, going to more various constraints and embedded interests at the global level. It is at this juncture, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, that I wish to commend the organizers once again for this towering effort at deepening our democracy and ensuring that Africa benefits more from contemporary international law enforcement. Thank you for your kind attention as I invite the um, MC to take up from here and this is our guest lecturer. I want to ask you that you will not take more than 45 minutes. Once more, most welcome. I thought we would clap a little more.